every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, good to have you join us for Core TV News on the hour. I am Gift or Gete. The federal government has threatened not to pay the delegates at the national conference who refused to attend plenary. The message was relayed by the conference management to the delegates during their sitting on Thursday. After the presentation of the report of the Committee on Civil Society, Labour, Youths and Sports by its chairman Bola Ogurinde, chairman of the conference Idris Kutugi asked his deputy Bolaji Akinyemi to relay an important message to the delegates. Akinyemi says it was obvious that delegates might not like what he was going to say, but asked them to understand that there was no way government would be happy to realize that some of them were usually absent during debates. He says since the sittings were usually live on television stations, the delegates should also know that government officials had been watching and noticing that seats were usually empty. Akinyemi ordered that delegates should know that allowance being paid to them was tied to sitting. It would be recalled that the plenary was short, horridly suspended for 30 minutes on Wednesday morning due to the inability of the conference to meet quorum. The Independent National Electoral Commission in Ikiti began the distribution of sensitive voting materials to the 16 local government areas of the state Thursday morning. Correspondent Rashid Rashid was there. His report is presented from our studios. The exercise carried out in the presence of officials from APC, Accord, PDP and Labour parties was a continuation of the process which started on Wednesday when the Commission received the materials from the Central Bank of Nigeria. We now want to open in the presence of everybody. I hope it was the way we left this vehicle that we found it now. The process was almost marred by an altercation which ensued over some forms that were not serialized and on the directive of INEC, that only one party agent will man each point of the exercise. We are not likely to have the number of voting points that we think we are going to have. From the arithmetic of the people. The voting materials were later distributed from a truck in accordance with their designated local government areas before their takeoff to their various destinations. Who is this driver? Who is this driver? You. Meanwhile, INEC has commenced the accreditation of observers for the Saturday poll. The June 21st governorship poll in Ikiti State has received the standing orders of the various stakeholders in the election. Speaking at the INEX Stakeholders Forum in Ado Ikiti, Chairman of the Commission, Atahiro Jaga, reveals the security features embedded in various ballot materials to ensure credibility of the election. Rashid Rashid was there again, her father in this report. The stakeholders' meeting, which attracted top peculiars of INEC officials, security agencies, political parties and their candidates were said to be imperative in order to display the level of INEX preparedness at conducting a credible election. The commission in the Kiki state remains steadfast and committed to the guiding principles of INEC, which among others include transparency, fairness, equality and integrity and has assured of its readiness create a level playing field for all the political parties and candidates during the governorship poll. INEX National Commissioner in charge of Ikiti State, 
Lai Olurode is counting on the cooperation of political parties for the success of the election. If you choose on your own to let their election fiasco, to let the election go under, we cannot, the security agent cannot do more than what they are doing. We have been contemplating when do we distribute the election material. Should we do it a two days, three days to the election? And we are afraid what will happen to those materials, not by annex officials, but by other players in, in the game. Expressing direct shift from previous elections, Chairman of INEC, Atahi Rujaga, highlighted the security features in the various voting materials made to forestall Reagan. We have customized ballot papers such that ballot papers from one local government to another have different colors. We have customized even the result sheets. There are unique result sheets for each polling unit for this election. So you cannot move result sheets across polling units because if you do that, it will be detected and it will be dealt with. All the ballot boxes are serially numbered. For his part, Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Abubakar, wants politicians to act only within the ambit of the law on election day. Center, you cast your vote and you are free to go back to your house. You cannot take any government behavior of whatever kind and say, I am going for supervision. You have nothing to supervise. <laughs> that day, you are not for supervision. Allow INEC to do its job. Is it not so? Yes. With these developments, all eyes are now focused on AKT as the D Day draws close. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Ado AKT. The Nigeria police have expressed readiness to ensure the safety of lives and property during and after the election. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Abubakar, while speaking in Adoikiti ahead Saturday governorship poll in the state, warns troublemakers to stay clear of Ekiti. He reveals that the state borders will be closed at 6 p.m. on Thursday. Rashid Rashid again has more in this report. First-time visitors to Adoikiti and every other part of the state are likely to feel they are in a war zone. The whole of Ado Metropolis and Ikiti indeed are filled with heavy presence of policemen and soldiers, including their warlike hardwares. Beyond this, the Inspector General of Police hinted that the police will not take it lightly with anyone ready to foment trouble. All troublemakers that were prepared for this election and we shall not and will not tolerate anybody no matter how highly placed that individual think he is, that will come here and cause trouble. If you do so, you meet the consequences of your action. While announcing the closure of all borders in the state by 16.00 hours Thursday, the Inspector General warns those who has nothing to do in equity to leave or face the music. Today is Wednesday, and we are three days to this election. If you are not from the Ikiti state and you have nothing to do this election, I want to warn, today should be your last day in this state. If by tomorrow, 1600 hours, 6 p.m., we find you here, we shall get you arrested. He also confirmed the arrest of some people with already thumbprinted ballot boxes in the state and dismissed the prayer of the APC chairman in AKT on the development. Abu Bakr again reminded the police on the need to be civil with the electorates. Do not expect any security agent to misbehave to anybody. We expect them to respect every citizen of the state. And if they do otherwise, we have monitors who will take them up and will be sanctioned. As it is, 
The stage, according to the police, is now set for the conduct of the Saturday election. Rashid Rashid, Call TV News, Adoekiti. The June 21st governorship poll in Ekiti State is again stirred the honest nest. This time, popular Lagos based lawyer Bamidele Atu, who has been speaking on the security arrangements put in place for this weekend's poll, says the heavy security presently in place in Ekiti is enough to scare away many voters. The military um, uh, uh, mentality still old way. We still think that unless we uh, flood the place with soldiers, flood the place with policemen, uh, there is no security. And that is the tragedy of our situation. Because you can do the equity election without creating this frenzy, this excitement, you know, this panic. Now you are going to scare away some of the voters. I mean, there are people who say, look, at my age, maybe I'm 70 years or 80 years, why should I go and kill up when somebody can uh, just kill you accidentally? So I, I, I think that we need to go back to the drawing board and, and train our law enforcement agents. Watch out for more on Atu in our weekly news program, Judiciary Today. The police have again failed to produce the Akiti State Commissioner for Integration and Intergovernmental Relations, Fumini Afuye, before a federal high court in Abuja. Afuye and 11 others were due to be ducked on terrorism charges Thursday after the police failed to turn up with the accused persons on Wednesday. The matter was not listed for hearing in Justice Evo Chuko's court, and none of the lawyers showed up. There are indications that the police may have withdrawn the terrorism charges filed against the accused persons. Court TV News also learned that Afuye and the others have been taken back to Adoikiti. Their lawyer, Femi Falano, says he expects them to be released after the police failed to go ahead with the matter in the court. Nigeria's largest opposition party, the All Progressives Congress, says it won't accept the outcome of this weekend's governorship election in Ekiti State if the process is not transparent. This was the message new chairman John Odigie Oyegu passed across shortly after the inauguration of the APC's new national executive in Abuja. The party leader noted that series of events in the last 72 hours are pointers to the desperation of the People's Democratic Party to rig the election at all costs. It's only a few days after the APC's inaugural convention and APC members are back in Abuja. This time, it's for the inauguration of the party's new national executives. And just like their last gathering, party supporters came in droves. There had been suggestions that some of the newly elected party executives had been dropped, but convention chairman was quick to clear the air on this. We were concentrating upon women leader in the northeast, and an SPCO is a mere rumor going on. Not aware of it. It hasn't come to my notice. So please take that as mere rumor. It has worked us at town. This paved way for the inauguration of the team and afterwards, new party chairman delivered APC's position on events of the last 72 hours in the Kitty State. On Tuesday, June 17th, two loaded aircraft load the market at Akure Airport with undisclosed content. What has made this even more suspicious and ominous in the presence of the Minister of State Defense. He also left no one in doubt about how the party will take it if the process is eventually compromised. And for the APC chairman, the earlier President Jonathan takes action, the better. And with your cooperation, we are going to work night and day. We are going to toy night and day to fulfill the promise of the APC. To underline APC's party's readiness to checkmate what it insists is PDP's rigging agenda, the new party chairman has decided to relocate to Ekiti State. John Odigo Yogun accepts that it is his first real challenge as party chairman, and he is convinced he will start his tenure on a good note by leading APC to victory in Ekiti State.
The All Progressives Congress insists that there was no controversy over the age of its national youth leader. Party spokesman Lai Mohammed told journalists in Abuja that Ibrahim Jallo is 43 years old and not 52, as widely speculated. He also maintained that Jallo's emergence was not contrary to APC's constitution. One, the youth leader was born on the 13th of April 1971. And we challenge anybody who has a contrary information to come forward. All we've had are uh, instances that he contested for House of Brex in 2011 and there he claimed to be 49. The father of Jalo is alive. The birth certificate, we have it. Two, after the time Jalo went for screening, there was no age limit as to who can be youth leader in our party. Amendment was made on the floor of the of the convention, after which he had been screened and he had been cleared to contest. Now there are two schools of thought. Would an amendment that took place at the eve of on the night of convention is it for future new elections or for present one? And this issue that I believe we are going to sort out. Former pioneer member of the All Progressives Congress, Tom Ikeme, has attributed his problems with the party to the tyrannical approach to leadership of Bola Tinubu, whom has said threatened fire and brimstone if the former Edo State Governor, John Odige Oyego, did not emerge as the APC national chairman. Describing the pair, the former governor, of illegal state wills in the APC, Ikimi says Tinubu operated as the core of one of these carcasses whose membership varied from time to time within the realms of his whims and caprice. Ikimi, a former foreign affairs minister, accused Tinubu of turning the opposition party into a private property and that some stalwarts of the APC were willing to accede to his whims, which eventually turned the party's convention last week to a charade. Ikimi, ordered that the party's governors concluded with Tinubu to truncate the democratic process at the last convention. Chief of Defense Staff Alex Bade has dismissed suggestions of a possible military coup in Nigeria. He said in a statement issued in Abuja that the military is too professional to consider a takeover. Air Chief Marshal Bade noted that the armed forces are defenders of democracy and would not work against what they are part of. Bade expressed surprise at the coup rumors, but called on the military, but called the military a professional group that has no option but to love Nigeria. Nigeria's security agencies have raised a security alert and plans to ram patrol tankers rigged with bombs into crowded places in Abuja. Government officials say the alert is based on credible intelligence report. Coordinator of the National Information Agency, Mike O'Meary, confirmed this and wants Nigerians to remain security conscious. I've received intelligence to the effect that insurgents intend to seize patrol tankers and plant improvised explosive devices and drive them to crowded places in Abuja. As a result of this, we have a call on the general public and patrol tanker drivers and their association to receive this as an alert measure and to also advise their members to report any attempt to seize vehicles or their vehicles to security. This is Core TV News on the hour. Uh, we'll take a short break. Stay with us. From time immemorial, women are birthed lie, shaped character, and by extension, influence the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women 
in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. TV News, expanding your view. Core TV News on the air. For more information on our news and other programs, visit us on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Core TV News. You can also follow us on Twitter, it's at Core TV News NG. Also on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash Core TV Space News. Spain's new king, Philip V, launches his reign before Parliament on Thursday, sparking a day of celebration in the flag-filled streets of Madrid for a people smarting from the World Cup humiliation. Long live Spain, long live the king, cried early crowds outside Parliament, where Philippe, a tall 46-year-old former Olympic yachtman, will be sworn in as after he legally assumed the throne at midnight. As police helicopters hovered above officers closed city center avenues and snipers deployed on roofs in a 7,000 strong security operation for the royal festivities. Philip Litz, a royal family tarnished by scandal after the 39 year reign of his 76 year old father, John Carlos, who signed his act of abdication with tears in his eyes at the royal palace the day before. Philip received the red silk sash of the military forces captain general from his father before heading to parliament where he entered through doors flanked by statues of lions and covered by a giant red canopy with the state's coat of arms with his elegant 41-year-old wife Leftizia, a former television news presenter. The king will then be driven from parliament through the streets of Madrid. And that's our news for this hour. Thank you for watching. Join us again. I am Gift Orgete. Good evening. <laughs>